Oh, we lost the spinnaker. Some very expensive lessons this week. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. And I think I have a new favorite sail. I think every offshore catamaran sailor should have one of these. Buckle up, kiddies. We are one-third our way across the Atlantic Ocean. It's a long trip with a lot of challenges. And so far, things have been a bit rough. In a big rush to get to the Miami Boat Show, the captain has decided to cut the corner, as they say. The route that I suggested was uh, not the route that the captain chose. The thing that's most frustrating here is this is just not necessary. It doesn't save us time to go into the messy stuff. Because if we stay in the mellower conditions, yeah, your distances may be a little longer, but you don't end up slowing the boat down quite so much because of the sea state. We've been pointing relatively high to the wind. We've been cutting across the waves and it's been bouncy. Now it looks like it's time to turn downwind and go with the waves and that should be more comfortable. But we're not doing it because of comfort. We're gonna turn down towards the south because there's an area of light wind ahead. And if we try and punch through it, we're gonna burn even more of our meager diesel supply. Turning downwind is called bearing away. And it's actually one of the less efficient points of sail for a performance catamaran, or most sailboats actually. Downwind, the relative wind is lighter, so you don't go quite as fast for a given sail area. The solution is to put up bigger sails. And on boats like these, that means a spinnaker. Loose luff sails like a spinnaker are often quite intimidating, especially for newer sailors. But they are an awesome tool. Because they're only attached by three points, they more or less fly. And that's a good thing on the open ocean. The roll of the swell won't take the wind out of the sails quite so much, and they're often a lot quieter. The huge sail area means you've got tons of power to go faster. By far the most popular spinnaker on a cruising catamaran is the asymmetrical spinnaker. They do have limitations though. You can only sail them down to about 160 degrees of the true wind. They're not great for going dead downwind. So when the wind is directly behind you, you end up jibing back and forth. This increases the boat speed, but isn't great for the VMG or the velocity made good. Thankfully, right before we left Le Grand Mont in France, Outremer put on a couple new sails for this boat. And one is a symmetrical spinnaker. It's something that none of us aboard have ever used on a catamaran. This is something new for us. Just like the A-SIM, we launch and douse with a sock. Here we are preparing the halyards and the sheets, running the sheets back to the winches, and unlike when we fly the asymmetrical spinnaker, we're gonna take the main sail down. This will give us cleaner airflow, but makes us all a bit nervous because there's no way to blanket the spinnaker should we have a really strong wind come from behind. We are gonna leave the Genoa up. The winds are in the 25 knot range and the Genoa will keep the boat moving forward to reduce our apparent wind so the spinnaker doesn't see so much stress when it inflates. And just like that, a piece came over the boat, a piece we hadn't felt in several days. There are so many advantages to this sail. You can see that we've led the sheets right to the bows. So more or less the sail is self-tending. 
It's also smaller than a standard symmetrical spinnaker, so you can handle stronger winds. Let's slow it down a little bit so you can see how the boat and sail is reacting as the swells move in from behind. And speed-wise, we were getting about one half of the true wind speed. Not bad at all. There are two things I'd like to figure out how to manage better. How to control the foot of the sail a little bit better, perhaps with some four guys led to the tacks. Or are they clues? I guess we have two clues on this sail. And the other thing is, as the boat begins to surf on a swell, we lose our apparent wind and the sail begins to deflate. Might want to sheet it a little closer to the deck. But after banging around for so many days, it was really nice to finally relax just a bit. Twelve knots almost directly towards our destination and in complete comfort? Yeah, we'll take it. We sailed along like this for a good solid three days. It was awesome. But all good things must come to an end and the wind eventually fizzled on us, as expected. One of the reasons I wanted to head for a more southerly route was consistent winds. The further north you are, the more you're affected by the cold fronts, but also the calms in between. What's happening, Nick? It's time to change course. We're out of gas, literally and figuratively. So we've had a nice long downwind run and we're gonna shift gears. We're gonna put up the A2, the asymmetrical spinnaker and the mainsail and see if we can squeeze a little speed out of here because this is an Uchimere 55, what are we doing? Five knots, that's unacceptable. <laughs> What's the plan, Cap? To set up the A2. Yep. We're going south. We're going south. It actually became a running joke on board. Every time the captain asked me what I thought about the forecast and the routing, I said, we need to go south. That's where the trade winds are. Those are the consistent breezes and the better speed for us. Like the symmetrical spinnaker, the A2, the ASIM, is also a brand new sail loaded on just before we left. Same procedure, we set up the sheets, Bring those back to the winches. Make sure the sock snuffer line is ready to go. Hoist and then raise the snuffer. Thankfully not much wind here, but having a tangled snuffer line could really foul things up. That's the line we'll use to lower the snuffer and douse the sail later. We can take... 115? We try with 115? 150. Just don't look at VMG, okay? That's not important. We don't care about VMG at all. It's all about boat speed, baby. Hopefully it's more. Let me look. VMG. What do you think? Oh man, first of all, I believe that's a virgin sail right there. I don't think she's ever flown before. 
Our execution was 100% flawless. Not a single issue. No, actually, it's pretty smooth. What's kind of weird though is I don't think we've touched the sails in what, like three or four days? And we had some salt build up and maybe some dust build up. And so uh, the clutches were a little sticky. So that's something to be mindful of. You know, you're just on one tack for a week. Your stuff might get a little frozen up. But feels great doing some speed again. Not that we didn't love the symmetrical spinnaker, but the ASIM, get a little angle on it. Start moving. Look at that. Speed over ground. 9.5 Take it. There's only one problem with this situation and that is We've got nobody to impress but ourselves. There's nobody here Guys halfway across. How are we feeling? Happy happy. Yeah, happy to be where we are. Yeah, we're not motoring sailing nice got the A2 up today Couple challenges ahead. Yes with the weather. Yeah, yeah, we'll see Got a cool front coming, and then maybe a, a no wind situation. Yes. We'll be fine as long as we don't run out of pretzels and water. water. And, and diesel. And diesel. <laughs> That'll help too. I know spinnakers are intimidating, and you certainly have to be on your game with these things, but. Boy, oh boy, is it pleasant. Now we are still right on the edge of the lighter winds, so... We lost our wind, and I really hate doing this. I'm sure you guys hate doing this. We had to turn on the engines. Engine, to keep the boat moving. But... Just as quickly as the wind faded, it came back to life. Here we are, slicing along, doing 9.3, 9 9.1 knots in about 14 to 15 knots breeze. Sea is near flat. This is what you call champagne sail. It's beautiful. When it's just Megan and I sailing, we're much more cautious flying the spinnaker, and we almost never fly the spinnaker at night. You gotta be on the lookout for squalls, areas where there could be stronger winds. Spinnakers can be pretty tough to handle once the wind pipes up. Good evening everybody from Mid-Atlantic. We are 1,200 miles out from the British Virgin Islands. Full moon tonight, it's absolutely spectacular. The wind has been generous with us today, about 15 knots, and we've been doing some pretty decent time. Right now averaging about eight and a half knots, but we've been up near 10 uh, many times today. Thinking the wind's gonna fill in quite a bit here uh, by tomorrow afternoon, and that should help our speed. Maybe, maybe six more days until arrival. All right, have a good night, everybody. This is the view from my berth as I'm coming off watch. Literally just kept the camera rolling. This, of course, is an owner's version, so there is so much room on the starboard side. It is really comfortable, and the bed's nice, too. I wanted to show you this shot so you can get a sense for how much noise there is down below when you're underway. I'm almost always wearing earplugs. I really have to, to get any rest. It's actually something I don't like to do on our own boats because you can't hear when somebody needs you topside. And a couple hours into my off watch, I heard screams from the deck. Hey, Laura. We broke. Yeah. What happened, Nick? Oh, we lost the spinnaker. 
That beautiful brand new spinnaker is shredded. Got caught up on the dagger boards, the rudders, the sail drives. It was a mess. Losing the sail is actually the least of our worries at this point. We've got to make sure that our steering isn't fouled by the lines that ran overboard. Hey, Kiski Sapas. This is exactly why I stash rigging knives all over the boat. Eventually, we were able to cut the sheets free from the sail. Unfortunately, the sail was very difficult to retrieve. Every time we grabbed a handful, it would just rip even further. The snuffing line remained caught in our starboard rudder. The captain made the call to dump the spinnaker over, hopefully to free that line. It didn't work. All right, our first, uh, so far only mishap. The uh, spinnaker halyard parted about, uh, oh, about four in the morning local time. And, um, and the spinnaker went overboard and took us about an hour to free it from the, free the sheets and the rudder and all that. And unfortunately we had to cut it away, cut away the spinnaker, brand new spinnaker. So we're gonna continue on under Genoa and uh, we still got some pieces of the spinnaker, but oh, up ahead of us we've got some squalls, so it's going to be uh, could be a long final stretch here. Sad to see the evidence the next day. Of course, some threads left over. We were able to retrieve about a quarter of the spinnaker. Also bent a stanchion up forward when that spinnaker went in the water. There was a lot of force on it. We also started asking ourselves how and why this happened. This is a very expensive mistake. What exactly happened was pretty clear. The halyard broke right at the top at the head of the sail. The working end of the halyard at the splice was just a mess. And we have the rock star Robin to thank for climbing the mast so we could all take a close look at what went wrong. It was, in fact, it was like that. So we see that it's on the side that it's been cut. It's not at the end of it. It's just on the side here. And look, it's a bit used on the both sides, you know? This side, the two sides are, are getting... Uh... Yes, but ça a pu bouger dans le, dans le truc. The captain certainly had yeah. his theories. It's it's sharp. If I do it like that, pushing a bit, I will cut my finger. On, uh, here, yes, if you do it. I'll do it smaller. I yes. believe you. I did it before. Yeah. See, wow, it's, wow that's it. crazy. I, I, I don't mean to argue, but would, would we actually be talking about this? Uh, no, because the... Uh, because you, you fix this. It's, it's like that. Come like that. It's like that. This is this the speed. The speed is like. Ah, that. No, no, you're no, right. no, no. You're right. You have reason. Ça c'est ce que tu me spies. Oui, mais là c'est une simple. C'est pas ah, une yeah, swivel. Yeah. C'est pas une swivel. C'est une simple. C'est deux fois ça. It's the 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 halyard we got is. It's not exactly this. It's two times this. It's this there and this there. I guess that explanation seemed plausible, but it seems to me it would have cut through a lot faster. And then I remembered, hey, I've got a recorded record of this entire trip. Let's go to the instant replay, shall we? This is the halyard in question, just a few days before. Yeah, that halyard's got an eye splice and 
It's got a proper shackle. There is absolutely nothing improper about what you see here. One thing to note though, when you put an eye splice into this kind of line, the diameter gets to be a bit wider. Now I want to make clear, I'm getting into speculative territory here. I do not know the reason why that halyard parted. I'm just trying to make reasonable guesses so that you might check things out on your own rig. We had two rig inspections before we left France. This Uchimera tech is checking out what I'll call a halyard retainer. Now I can't really tell for sure, but it looks like there could be some sharper angles on this particular retainer. Now that could be possibly part of the cause. But I noticed something else interesting about this particular asymmetrical spinnaker. It's got a very long HLU measurement, and that's the distance between the head of the sail and the tack where it attaches to the sprit. The advantage of this kind of design is more sail area, more power. But just eyeballing it, it seems like you really have to have the halyard cinched all the way up. That splice has got to be right up against the retainer. Compare that with the spinnaker on our old boat, Clarity. The HLU measurement is shorter. No, we don't have quite so much horsepower, but look how much higher the foot is off the deck. We also have more halyard peeking out from the mast. And instead of a retainer, we've got a swivel or toggle block that moves as the halyard moves. Again, this is all speculation. But it's worth questioning because losing a spinnaker is a pretty expensive and potentially dangerous situation. Uh, we have a, a line stuck in the rudder, so we're gonna try to pick it off from, from the speaker. speaker. Yeah, the, the line for, to, for the sock to, to get the socks off. The line for the spinnaker sock had jammed itself in the rudder. Thankfully though, we did not lose steering and, and it only took Robin about 20 seconds to get it free. The purpose of this kind of post-mortem is not to assign blame. The purpose is to learn from whatever mistake was made so that we don't make that same mistake again. Thankfully, we were underway pretty quick, this time under power for the last leg of the journey. Speaking of, this Atlantic crossing is almost over. Land ho! Next time we're going to sew things up on this journey and I guarantee the ending is something that none of us saw coming. Thanks for watching everybody. As always, an extra huge tremendous shout out to our patrons. Without you guys, these videos would not be possible. Thanks again. See you next time.